You are listening to the voice of the Frontline Protector here at the Private Officer Beat Radio. Every week, you'll hear breaking news, topics of training, information for the industry of security, public safety, and law enforcement. So strap in, hang on, we're about to start. Feed off in this episode of the Private Officer Beat Radio. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Private Officer Beat Radio on this Monday. Sunny, beautiful Monday where I'm at. No clouds and no rain. The ninth day of May 2022. We certainly have a lot of things to talk about here on the Private Officer Beat Radio today, and as always, we've got a lot of breaking news. Remember, you can go to our breaking news blog every day. We broadcast the news there that matters to you. PrivateOfficerBreakingNews.blogspot dot com and check out our social media, especially on Twitter at twitter dot com forward slash private officer and join the conversations on Facebook every day. Facebook dot com forward slash private officer international. Today we want to talk about the changes in the need for security And we're also going to be talking a little bit about the growing areas of the country. People are moving. They are exiting their home states, moving further and further away from large pockets that have been home to millions of people for 50, 60, 100 years since the immigrants, our forefathers, came to this country. People are moving out of crime-ridden cities and states. And I've got the numbers right here for you. In fact, uh, maybe even going to surprise a few folks. And also, we're going to be talking about who's hiring security. And this may surprise you as well. If you've got a private security business or you're thinking about opening up one, well, I've got your clients right here. I've got some of the top, top businesses hiring security today. Of course, we have a lot of breaking news, as always. And I want to talk about how many security officers are on trial right now, right now, for murder. And those are just a few of the things that we're going to cover in today's program. More than 100, 100 rounds, 100 shots fired in the middle of a family event on the fairgrounds in Mississippi. And across the country, in the middle of the country, More than 40 gunshots ring out in a gun battle between security and two shooters at a nightclub. And these, these are just the tip of the iceberg as we see more and more gun battles between private security and the bad guy. We know that law enforcement are fighting the good fight every single day. Someplace across the country, a law enforcement officer is in the battle for his life. But what we don't really think much about is 
how many times does it happen and it involves private security? Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about how many security officers are now armed and now finding themselves in the middle of a gun battle. In Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, the capital of the state, in the heart of the state, a city of several hundred thousand people at the crossroads of several major interstates, a growing metropolitan area. I've had an office there. I know the city well. There's going to be drugs and crime in every city, especially a metropolis or a metropolitan area. They're close to Memphis. They're close to other major cities. But here it was, a large family festival on the fairgrounds, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people there, when suddenly two teenagers force their way through the gates and get into a gun battle with security and law enforcement working private duty at the festival. One person is dead, several others injured. The mayor of the city said law enforcement and private security put these thugs down. His words, not mine after an extreme gun battle. People running for cover, people climbing under their vehicles, under the tables, trying to avoid being shot. But it was security alongside of law enforcement that put a quick end, taking two juveniles in custody who have now been charged as adults with murder and multiple counts of aggravated assault. Kansas City, again, several people upset about being asked to leave a nightclub, return, and begin shooting at security standing outside. Forty rounds were fired. One security officer shot the suspects on loose. Are these just, you know, things that they don't really happen often, and this just happens to be one of those moments when, you know, two large shootings come together? No, it happens every single day across the country. It involves private security over and over and over again. That's why I encourage you to go to our news blog. We can't give you the news every day. I don't have enough time every week on my radio show to go through each and every one of the news items. And even on our blog, we just don't have the time to list every event, every shooting, every stabbing, every incident. So we put the ones that you know, was more extreme than the others. Every day, there are 50 states. We've said this before, 50 states. Imagine if only one or two or three security officers in each state are assaulted, injured every day. That'd be 100 to 150 cases, but we know that there's 3,000 assaults or more every day. Across the country, Security is being attacked even more so than law enforcement. You've got to educate yourself. You have to understand what time it is, the dangers. It's important to track these things. Right now, I'm teaching a class called High Risk Assignments. And when we come back from this first break, we're going to talk about the areas of the country that's becoming more and more violent and areas of the country that people are moving to. But with the influx of people 
come the influx of crime. I'm living in several states that are growing and experiencing a huge increase, a huge volume of people moving to the cities every day. I just read last week, Nashville, Tennessee, they're getting more than 150 people every day moving into the city, 150 from across the country and around the world. Someone was interviewed recently on a Tennessee, uh, Nashville, Tennessee news channel, and they were from Australia, and they had been to Nashville many times. They love country music. They love the city, and they finally moved there with the family, and they were being interviewed, and they said, we love the South. We love the people, the excitement, the growth. People like that are moving. They're moving from other countries and other parts of the nation to certain areas. And when I come back, we're going to talk about that and how that is going to play a big part on the security officer's duties and the exciting part for security companies as There's going to be a lot more opportunities for them to expand the type of services that they provide. You're listening to the Private Officer Beat Radio. We'll be right back. There was the explosion, and I remember just opening my eyes, and I got both of my legs. I had surgery after surgery, and what's going to happen next? The Wounded Warrior Project said, look, brother, everything's going to be okay. Three months from now, four months from now, a year from now, you'll be fine. I don't know if I would be as well adjusted as I am now if it wasn't for them. To learn more, call 1-877-832-6997 or visit woundedwarriorproject.org. Each day, those that protect and serve us in law enforcement put their lives on the line. These law enforcement officers often work long and irregular hours in tough and dangerous conditions, run a high risk of being attacked, wounded, or even killed by the very criminals that prey on us. Every year, hundreds of law enforcement officers are killed or seriously injured in the line of duty. Blue Alert is a system that provides the means to speed the apprehension of violent criminals who kill or seriously injure local, state, or federal law enforcement officers. Find out how you can truly help those who help. That's bluealert.us. I don't want to go blind from diabetes. I don't want to lose a foot or a leg. I don't want to have kidney failure, so I'm taking control. I'm controlling my diabetes. It's making a huge difference. I'm eating healthy and staying physically active. I'm taking my medicine. If I can do it, anyone can. Control your diabetes for life. Call 1-800-438-5383. While we were at break, I was reading some news coming in from the AP Wire, Associated Press. We are talking today about what part of the country is exploding in growth and and some of the reasons why and the opportunities that's going to bring for private security businesses. And we're talking, as usual, about the dangers of the job and so forth. And here on the Associated Press, Wire just popped up. Three security guards shot dead at a Philippine polling station. Now, in that country, there's been a a widespread violence during the elections. And you wonder why the governor of Florida instituted voting uh, election police. Three security guards were shot and killed 
There was a family in Philippines that was ousted called the Marcos. Well, this election, it looks like that the country is about to install the son of the ousted president, Marcos Jr., as, as the new leader. The AP story doesn't really say what happened, why these men shot and killed three security officers at a voting station, but uh, it says a fourth security officer was also wounded. We talk about the violence here, but obviously it's been going on for many years in other countries. Um, we have connections in South Africa and uh, other parts, Ethiopia, other parts of the African area, African nation, um, and the violence there is extreme. Those security officers many times carry machine guns, heavily armed. Um, for the last several years, uh, it has been really taking their own lives in their own hands, especially armored truck robberies have skyrocketed, uh, and those people there don't play. They use bombs, grenades, uh, heavy artillery, and weapons to steal the money. So can you imagine working in that environment every day? For many security officers, they don't see the violence. They work in some safer positions, uh, they work in safer communities, but I have news for you. As we are teaching the high-risk assignment course, we're going through some of the most recent, some of the most recent shootings involving private security, and um, what we're finding really is that this is not always in the worst neighborhoods. This is not always uh, uh, what you would consider a high-risk assignment, a static assignment. I know that through the years we talked about unarmed versus armed, and, you know, it's apparent that almost every assignment is going to need armed security these days, although our larger contract security companies continue to shy away from that subject, and they don't want to even engage in conversation about it. But unfortunately, the numbers don't lie, and that's why we put them out. Uh, monthly, quarterly, and annually. Right now, 31 security officers have been murdered so far this year. 31. Another component of this armed or unarmed continues to be the training and we've talked about that and uh, have beat it to death but it is the truth you can arm almost anybody and train them uh, and supervise them and not have to worry about the exposure the liability or the risk to the degree that one might think However, if you just hand people guns and say, here you go, um, that's a problem. One of the things that we are seeing over the last several years across the country, and this has nothing to do with private security, but it does have something to do with putting guns in people's hands, a uh, unfortunate, unfortunate um situation is happening regularly almost every week and sometimes several times a week i see where store owners store employees are arrested because they shoot a shoplifter or someone causing a disturbance most of the time it's over a petty theft and sometimes they kill them and they get arrested for murder and it's all because they don't know the law, they don't know when they can use deadly force. Um, it's unfortunate. A security company owner that's just 24 was arrested this past week in Kansas City 
and charged with shooting a man. Um, the man was found to be in the patrol car of the security company. The security company owner came out, found him, drew down on him, and the man got out of the vehicle. The security company owner says that he felt threatened and he shot the man. I don't know if the man survived, but I know that the security company owner who, like I said, was around 24 years of age, was arrested. You cannot use deadly force for a property crime, but you can use deadly force to protect yourself if you feel as though you are in imminent danger, and that is a gray area. I know that cops use it all the time, and sometimes they get away, and it's justified, and other times, as we're seeing now for the last five or six years, police officers being prosecuted, sometimes unjustly. It is important that we understand uh, when we can and can't use force, but I, I will tell you this. Looking at the situation across the country and the violence and the rise of attacks on security, in fact, a number of news stations have recently done stories about the violence against security uh, catching their eye, including in Washington State, which really shocked me that they would do the story. Um, but Across the country, we're seeing a rise in violence against security, as with law enforcement. And that brings me to this topic. Currently, we know of 17 security officers right now on trial for murder because they used unreasonable force. And I will say this loud and clear, not that it's going to make a difference, but I will keep saying this until my dying day. It all boils down to train. You can put them through the 24-hour state regulatory training and think that's fine. You can put them through the state regulatory training of 40 hours. Even the state requires 60 hours. But you know, most of the time, you only got four to eight, four to eight hours of training um, in firearms or use of force. That's not enough. You need 40 hours of training in use of force and firearms. Teaching the difference between true imminent danger and just a threat. Assessing the situation. These 17 security officers are not the total number arrested in the last three years. No, these are just the ones that we know of that are currently on trial. And it breaks down like this. 63% of these murders happen at nightclubs. The highest percentage of shootings happen at nightclubs, restaurants that serve alcohol, strip clubs, after-hour clubs, illegal clubs. That's where the violence is. 19% of those arrested and now on trial for murder were at residential communities, including apartments and condominiums. 6% occurred at retail businesses, and 12% miscellaneous included patrols, special events, and commercial businesses. But the majority of these fatal shootings occurred at nightclubs. Think about that. 17 people currently sitting in a jail cell waiting to be tried for murder. And many of them have little to no defense why they used lethal force. Everyone thinks that they know the job. Everyone thinks they know the law. Everyone thinks they know Oh, I can use lethal force anytime I think I'm threatened. Uh, blah, blah. You know, that's, that's not how it is. Ultimately, 
police may not arrest you when a shooting situation occurs, but that's going to go to a grand jury and they're going to indict you. And, you know, you're going to have to fight your way, fight for your life in court. And I don't think people realize the process, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of security officers don't have a lot of money. And what that means is they're going to get a free lawyer and a free lawyer may or may not be the best type of lawyer that you want in this type of defense when you're on trial for murder. We're going to take a quick break. we got a lot more to talk about, obviously. I want to talk about some of the areas of the country that people are moving and the surprising, surprising list of people who are hiring private security these days. You are listening to the Private Officer Beat Radio. Remember, Private Officer International, join now for just $99, lifetime member. Go to our website, privateofficer.org, and click on the little tab up at the top that says uh, Specials, and you can get that $99 lifetime membership and save 80 bucks right now. You're going to get more than 40 member benefits, and uh, also you can go to Armor College right now and sign up for some of those classes that are also on special for the next couple of weeks. We're, we'll be right back. Human trafficking is slavery. And it happens all over America. Any child, any woman, any man could potentially become a victim of human trafficking. I am a victim of labor trafficking. I was a victim of child sex trafficking, but now I own my body. Human trafficking is any kind of forced labor. It can happen to anybody. I am a mother. I am an author. I am a son. I'm an advocate. I am an educator. I'm a sister. I am a brother. I'm so much more than what happened to me. I am strong. I am brave. I am outspoken. I am compassionate. I am a survivor. 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 I am a survivor of human trafficking. you're listening to the voice of the frontline protector right here on the private officer radio network now don't go away because we are coming right back when we've got a whole lot more right here on the private officer beat radio i was just going to the grocery store seatbelt violators beware i forgot to put it on if you're pulled over because you've broken the law. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. And you're not wearing your seatbelt. It's broken, but I'm going to have it fixed. No matter what your excuse is, you will get a ticket in addition to the ticket for your original violation. Click it or ticket? That's pretty easy to remember. Without this woman, my father couldn't have had his hip replaced. Without these people, I'd be dead. This man helped my son through leukemia. Do something amazing. We have stepped away and come over to the news desk here where 
our computers are always tracking not only the news here nationwide, but around the world. And if you're not already following us on Twitter and you're really interested in keeping up with uh, not only everything that's happening in the security world, but law and order and general news, important news, follow us on Twitter because we post there 24-7. Twitter.com forward slash private officer. Of course, you can also check out our daily news blog at privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com. Privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com. There's going to be some changes in the news uh, products that we put out coming up soon. We'll be telling you more about that in the upcoming weeks. But right now, I want to share some of the news that's happening in our world. Uh, first, let me start with an incident that happened this weekend in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is um, a situation that uh, evidently um, really got out of hand very quickly. Police spotted someone lighting police cars on fire at the Raleigh Police Southeast District Headquarters Saturday afternoon. Officers called for immediate backup. And that's when the suspect began throwing Molotov cocktails at officers. Police opened fire, killing the man. In a press release this morning, the police chief of Raleigh, North Carolina, Estella Patterson said security cameras at the police station as well as officer warned body cameras all recorded what happened and she's going to file a request to have this video released to the public as soon as possible. This is not the first time in recent weeks when someone in North Carolina lit multiple police cruisers on fire. In fact, this happened about a week and a half ago nearby Raleigh, where a suspect um, lit four police vehicles on fire while the officers were taking a break at a 7-Eleven, uh, totally destroying those uh, police vehicles and this is not the only location or the only state where this is happening. We've seen this over the last two or three years during Black Lives Matters uh, protest, and now it seems like this has started up again across the country. In other news, in Old Orchard Beach, Maine, a very beautiful, picturesque little town, the police chief there is retiring after almost 50 years on that police force. Police chief Dana Kelly will retire after 49 and a half years, 30 of them as the police chief. Amazing, but of course, when you're in a beautiful setting like that, who'd want to leave? The University of Illinois announced this past week that they are hiring community service officers to replace or augment, I should say, not really replace, but augment officers on their campuses. The CSOs will complement their existing police staffing and enhance service throughout the campus community, responding to minor calls for theft, lost property, vandalism, lockouts, and other quality of life issues. And we are seeing this more and more as police departments are hiring civilians to take over many areas that law enforcement used to respond to. We recently told you that two different police departments recently announced that they have hired civilian investigators to do interviews and skip tracing and track folks down and other uh, non-law enforcement investigative work. 
other police departments have also followed the same pattern over the last few years. The mayor of Chicago and some of its citizens are questioning why a private security company called P4 Security Solutions is patrolling such a large swath of the city. This company was first hired by businesses to patrol a small segment of downtown. Now they are out on the West Loop. If you know anything about Chicago, um, the West Loop encompasses businesses and communities. Um, they have also taken over patrolling many areas, and they have set up a command center in Downers Grove. They say they're under contract not by the city, but private citizens and private businesses, and the mayor and some of the other city councilmen are looking into whether or not any laws are being broken. These folks here with P4 Security Solutions are doing exactly what other cities and uh, communities are doing. They're hiring their own patrol officers because there's just not enough police response or not enough officers to do the job. We talked about this so many times over the last two or three years. And I believe that this is really going to be the signs of the times. People are going to, I mean, people are fed up with crime. People are fed up with not being able to call the police and have them respond in a reasonable amount of time. A friend of mine was recently involved in a, a considerable accident. No one was seriously injured, but it took police two and a half hours, two and a half hours to respond to that call. In Manhattan, a robbery at a T-Mobile at East 149th Street, um, the store employees kind of turned the table. The men did get away with an array of phones at the T-Mobile store, but what the men didn't know was they had trackers on them, GPS trackers. They assisted NYPD officers. Um and very quickly was able to make some apprehensions. This was smart thinking on the part of the store employees. I saw a very interesting story last week coming out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Again, this is the sign of the times. And it's not just in Minnesota. I've seen it in Georgia. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this across the country. There are many parades and festivals this time of year fairs, and other outdoor events. But one of St. Paul's signature summer celebrations is now moving to the suburbs. And their main reason is because they say skyrocketing St. Paul police costs and other expensive demands by the city has caused them to cancel it. They say in 2019, Police charge $5,000 to have some officers at the parade doing security. This year, when they approached St. Paul police, the cost rose three times to $15,000. Now, I am hearing that off-duty police officers in certain communities are charging upwards of $100 per hour per man. I have lived in a number of major cities, and I know that this has been escalating throughout the years where police are really strong arming the public in as much as they're saying you can't use private security on public streets to direct traffic. You cannot use private security to do certain things on city-owned property. And so you got to pay us whatever it is that we demand. In one uh, city, they were 
asking an estimated $25,000 to provide traffic control during a festival. 25000 Seems a little, little bit much. Coming out of Seattle, Washington this past week, security at the Seattle Art Museum said they're joining the wave of security officers nationwide joining unions. And this museum I'm familiar with, the Seattle Art Museum, very nice. They say they don't understand it because they gave the security personnel recently a raise of 21, up to $21 an hour so that they wouldn't attempt to unionize. I have no love for unions. You may have a wage increase and you may receive some extra benefits. But every month you got to pay that thirty, forty, fifty dollars, and you're paying them right back. So any money that you're making through raises, you're actually giving back to the union. In Junction City, Kansas, the high school has decided to arm every security officer not with a gun, but with body cameras provided by Axon. They say all of their campus police officers have them, and it's time for their security staff to also wear them. Last week, coming out of Houston, Texas, an armored car guard security officer was transported to the hospital after being shot during a robbery at the Chase Bank. The security officer was servicing an ATM when he was approached by two armed men. But here's a very strange thing. Off-duty Houston police officers were already there, an off-duty police officer, working security. And he was outside of the bank. I guess the bad guys missed him because when he observed the robbery going down, he opened fire. The men are still on the loose. One of them possibly has been shot. In Boardman, Ohio, a security guard was arrested at a bakery. This was uh, not your neighborhood bakery, but rather a commercial bakery. An employee came whizzing through the parking lot. He says at a high rate of speed when the security officer stopped him and asked him to slow down. The man told him to go mind his effing own business. The security officer said, you can effing get off the property, a verbal confrontation, and then security did something, you know, that he should not have done. Tempers were flying, but he pushed the employee, which was an assault, and he's been arrested and charged with that assault. In Philadelphia, they have had it with guns getting into their schools. So they're doing what I've suggested for years. They're instituting a weapon scan. They're going to be checking for guns even at the middle school. Now, there is several high-tech firearms Scanning devices now out there that is not intrusive. They can be set up at the doorway. You can continue walking through. They will signal when a firearm has been detected. I have looked into these companies, and some of their clients are raving about this technology. If you are in an institution, a school, a hospital, uh, and, and you're considering uh, setting up metal detection, the hand wand thing is, you know, it's okay. It's slow. I just read the aquarium, the largest aquarium in the U.S., which is in Atlanta, has uh, set up the same type of uh, devices, and I'm going to be going there soon. So uh, 
I'll be checking them out. But um, I think all schools and all public places really need to have this technology. The TSA caught a man with not one knife, not five knives, but with 23 weapons in his carry-on luggage at the Reagan National Airport in Virginia, the man put his luggage through the x-ray machine, and TSA said that he had uh, brass knuckles, he had throwing stars, and a total of 23 weapons, including knives and other edged weapons. Last week, if you are receiving our news alerts and you read that a security guard in Atlanta was arrested after shooting a police officer who had been sent to a store to investigate a possible burglary. Paul Augustine, 41, charged with aggravated assault, the deadly weapon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony and reckless conduct. It happened at 6 a.m. at Marietta Street. Police were sent there to a business to investigate a possible burglary. Somehow, the security officer, and I, we don't know if he was working at the business or someplace nearby, somehow thought that the officer was the burglar and shot the police officer. Other officers on the scene quickly applied a tourniquet to the injured officer. Right now, the security officer is still in the Fulton County Jail. Hopefully we'll get more details as to uh, exactly what happened. This past week, three security officers died of COVID. We're still tracking as much as we can the COVID situation because security officers are still dying. Right now, law enforcement is reporting about 775 police officers dead of complications from COVID. Our numbers are in the 500 plus range. Uh, TSA and other companies are not reporting uh, security officer deaths or even if their security personnel are still having issues with COVID. Um, many companies, security companies, G4S, Allied Universal and all the other large companies um, didn't report, uh, and this has been a problem since the beginning of the pandemic. Also in the news this week, and if you want to see our news, just go to private office of breakingnews.blogspot.com. Fort Lauderdale police are investigating after a shooting that injured a security officer and a second person at Southwest 2nd Avenue. Police were called to um, Boo's Garden uh, Little Festival and found that there had been a confrontation and a shooting. Now, I just did an article about a week ago about nightclubs, restaurants, and uh, strip clubs, and other places that serve alcohol. is the number one location now for security officer injuries deaths, and use of force incidents. Many insurance companies will not provide insurance for security companies that provide nightclub security. Um, we're coming out with the report, working on it right now for the first quarter of this year, number of security officer injuries, deaths, use of force incidents and other um, statistical data. And we'll probably have that done here uh, within the next week. On a final note, in Abington, Pennsylvania, an armed security officer um, was shot and police are investigating. This was a theft incident and suspects are on the run. Uh, every day, we're now seeing security officers being involved in shootings. It used to be every, you know, couple of days or whatever, but multiple times a day, actually. And we have a lot more breaking news. Go to private officer breakingnews.blogspot.com. We're coming right back. We have a lot more to talk about. 
What am I doing lying in this casket? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm dead. I got shot. I'm not supposed to be dead. I'm only 17. And now I can't see my 18th birthday because I'm a fatal victim of gun violence. My friends, my family, my own mother was devastated. Can't see her son anymore because of gun violence. And everyone's here at the funeral. But before they lay me the rest, there's just one last thing I have to do. How many more of us have to die from gun violence? Let's put a stop to this, because if we don't, the next time it could be your child lying in this casket. Brought to you by Man Up Inc. USA, a proud member of the Gun Violence Awareness Movement. America isn't the land of promise. It's a place where every day is a struggle. Because today in America, one in six children lives below the poverty line. For these children, living in poverty means going without. Going without medicine, going without food, going without a warm home, or even a roof over your head. And that's life for nearly 13 million children of all races, all across America. Where will you draw the line and get involved You can help these children and their families find a way out of poverty for good. And you can make a difference in more ways than you think. Will you help? Go to PovertyUSA.org today. Because one in six children in poverty is one too many. People have always moved from one part of the country to the next. And I always, when I talk with people who tell me that they've been uh, recently transplanted to an area, uh, you know, I travel a lot and I get to talk with a lot of different people from a lot of different states and even countries. And it's always interesting, always interesting to hear their story. Everybody's got a story, and I like to hear people's stories and learn about their reason because I think it's I think it's fascinating, really, when you see people moving from the north to the south, east to the west, and and, and some of the places that people move to. It, it's really, really interesting to me, and from a business standpoint, uh, it, it helps me to kind of gauge where the country is and where they're going. Um, I was recently at a gas station and was talking to a guy at the next pump over, and we were just talking about the price of gas and uh, traveling the interstates these days. And he said, yeah, I'm actually I'm heading down to Florida uh, looking for a place to live. And I said, well, Oh, well, Florida is beautiful. It's kind of hot in the summer, and we're just talking. And he said, well, I've lived in a couple of different states, and my wife and I have decided that it's time to give up the rat race. We're both professionals. He said that he was, uh, I believe, an accountant. His wife worked as a nurse, and they were going to head down and find a uh, a house, a nice little place where it would be their final destination. I myself, getting old and over the hill, seeking my own final destination. And so we were talking, and it's interesting how people migrate. The the reason for that, I don't know if you uh, read 
the newspapers or pay attention to the news, but in the last few years, there are people, tens of thousands of people who have quit their jobs. That's right. While many are searching for a job, tens of thousands of people have quit their job. And why do they quit? Because of the pandemic, many people who were in jobs that they didn't like were sick of quit their jobs. In fact, the Bureau of Labor Statistics said that just this year, just this year, 301,000 people quit their jobs. In 2021, a record number of workers quit their jobs while U.S. employers had more positions to fill than ever before. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, four, listen careful, 4.3 million Americans quit their job. And that was just in December. 4.5 million people quit their jobs in November of 2021. Fed up people by the hundreds of thousands, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, millions just quit their job and said no more. And people are moving around the country. I met a couple who had decided to take an early retirement. They were only in their 40s, and they were going to camp around the country. I have a good friend on Twitter. Yeah, I know. And we communicate frequently. And they also quit their job about three years ago. And the family, the whole family, is traveling not only the U.S., but the world. And so I keep up with them on Twitter to see where they're at and how long they are. Thing. And they worked temporary jobs, and they took an early retirement. Also, people are taking early retirements, and I'm trying to figure out, well, how do you collect money when you're taking an early retirement? <laughs> Tell me the secret. Some of them have saved up money all their lives. Some of them have cashed out their 401Ks and other investments that they had. So that they could have this opportunity. And you know, I, I, I understand the reasoning. In talking with people, I've heard this said more than once. I'd rather do this now while I physically can, while I've got the kids here with me and we can enjoy this as a family, than say, oh, We'll get to it when I retire at 70, because 70 may never come. I may not be in good health. I may not be able, and even if I am able, I may not, once I get to these destinations, I may not physically be able to do all the things that I can do now. And so they're taking the opportunity today to take the trip of a lifetime. Wish I had done that myself. We've been looking uh, as part of a, a training that I'm going to be doing here soon. We've been looking at where people are moving to and where people are migrating to and what areas of the country are being left desolate almost. Uh, there are many cities that are really seeing an exodus. We've known for a long time people were moving to the suburbs, but now they're not just wanting to move outside of the city. In many cases, they want to move outside of the state. So according to Rocket Mortgage and several other 
contributors. Some of the states where people are moving to includes Arizona, Texas, North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, Idaho, Iowa, Utah, and Florida. These are some of the states that they're moving to. Cities like Charlotte and Raleigh and North Carolina are exploding. Nashville, Tennessee, exploding. It's no longer about country music in Nashville. In the, in the Carolinas, it's no more about rural, you know, this is just a farm state. In Alabama, along the Gulf Coast, exploding has been for years. One of the top beaches in the country makes the list over and over again. There are many places in this country that have a better quality of life, and people are going for it. They're getting out of the big, huge, dirty cities like Philadelphia, New York, and others. And they're heading to places where it's cheaper to live. It has better environment for their kids, less crime, and less taxes. Talking to a friend of mine recently, talking about the benefits of the South and the Southeast. They just really outweigh living in the big states. There are some states, and, I, you know, I can name New York and California and some of the others, but there are some states that are prohibitive in many ways to many businesses and individuals. And so they're moving. I grew up in Connecticut. Connecticut is a wealthy state. It is a very expensive state. Land is very expensive. And unfortunately, many people long ago left Connecticut and New England and have moved south and southwest. So according to Rocket Mortgage and other contributors, the south and southwest are the two areas of the country where they're seeing more people moving to, the south and the southwest. Although Idaho and Iowa was also in the mix, not exactly the South or the Southwest, but I guess you could consider them uh, the West. It is really uh, remarkable where people move to. It really is. What about you? Have you thought about moving? Have you thought about where you might go? Have you thought about changes? Well, if you're in the security industry, if you are thinking about owning a security company, you might want to look at where people are moving because that's where growth is happening. That's where businesses are popping up or booming, expanding. People for years called Alabama and Georgia redneck countries. Well, guess what? Again, the South is now becoming the capital of car manufacturing. Look at Georgia and Alabama. In Alabama, there's at least six or seven major automobile manufacturers. Georgia has several as well. Alabama has a big Boeing plant and several other large manufacturers who have moved to Alabama. People, wherever they move, you will see a huge explosion of building, homes, apartments, hotels, shopping centers, malls. I just read an article this weekend about a beautiful, picturesque community in Alabama, and people are beginning to complain. Why? Because their world is changing. Shopping centers popping up everywhere. Subdivisions being built everywhere, hotels, interstates, things are growing. You can't stop progress. Reading up yesterday, 
for the high-risk assignment, as we're talking this week about residential communities, I learned this. Residential communities, including apartments and condominiums, long-stay hotels, transitional housing, including homeless shelters and temporary living programs, gated communities, and single-family home communities are on the rise. They're being built everywhere. I have already knew that they were the third most violent type of properties for security. We ranked those earlier. The largest apartment community has 80 acres, including parkland, 11,250 apartments in 110 buildings. Nationwide, and this is from the National Apartment Association, 39 million people live in apartments. 39 million, which is one out of every eight people in the country. And according to a study by the National Apartment Association, 4.6 million new apartments are needed by 2030, just eight years from now, or there's going to be a substantial shortage of apartments. A couple of reasons include elderly people selling off their homes earlier in life, downsizing and moving to apartments rather than assisted living complexes. In 2007, 2008, uh, when many homes were foreclosed on because of the recession, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people actually moved back into apartments. And here's something I didn't think about. According to the National Apartment Association, more people who are young, and when I say young, 30-something, are staying in apartments rather than buying homes because they don't know if they're going to be planting roots or moving, as we've been talking about. So if you're in the security business, well, guess what? Might be a good place to start looking for new customers. In fact, uh, I was thinking, and as part of my training this week for high-risk security assignments, I was thinking this might be just a real specific type of security that a company could offer, both static, gatehouse security, and patrols. You could just make a living off this. I know a person who makes a living, they own a security company, their clients are synagogues and churches. That's all they do, synagogues and churches. There's nothing wrong with specializing, being a specialist. That's what doctors and most attorneys do. All right, very quickly, because we're running out of time, who's hiring security? Well, we know residential communities are. Uh, in our news, we see all the time more and more residential communities, condominiums, hotel complexes, apartments, long-stay hotels, uh, they're all hiring security. Business groups and associations, downtown associations, are hiring private security to patrol their communities. We did a radio show last year. We talked about Community security. More and more communities are hiring security patrols because there's just not enough law enforcement, there's not enough police, and they don't respond quick enough. This also could be a specialty area for patrol service. Um, years ago, we had uh, a patrol service of a community, and people paid every house. Every homeowner paid a subscription monthly for those patrols. Who else is hiring security? Well, believe it or not, social media celebrities and influencers. Some of them have had threats on their lives, and they've had to hire bodyguards, security, speakers. Just recently, several public speakers had to be led out of a campus by law enforcement because of 
all the threats against them. Comedians. I just read an article this past week. See why it's important to read the news. Comedians are having a higher security. You know, everybody takes offense at everything that you say these days. So if you say something that people don't agree with or don't think is funny, they begin to threaten you. And some folks have been assaulted. We know politicians are hiring their own private security. And that's even on a local end. People who are running for office or in office on the town level, the city level, the county, they're having to hire some security themselves. And believe it or not, law enforcement is hiring security. With the recent uh, uptick of attacks at police headquarters, some police stations now staff armed security at the front door, and they check everyone coming in. And that's unfortunate, but it's going to be, you're going to see that more and more across the country. We also know that law enforcement is hiring in many areas community service officers, which is essentially unarmed security that go out and they respond to incidents where there's no crime in progress. They take police reports. Uh, they investigate minor infractions. They provide parking enforcement. And they're also, they conduct uh, traffic services. They investigate minor accidents. And also they help police direct traffic at serious accidents, fires, and other events. There's a lot of growth in the private security industry. But if you're willy-nilly and you don't know which way you're going to go, well, I don't want to take anything that's unarmed, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't want to take anything where we got to be armed. You know, you can try to define your company and you're going to put it in such a small compartment that there's never going to be any growth for your business because you're not looking or thinking outside of the box. There are many opportunities, many opportunities, and I don't want to go through all the, the things I've experienced with my businesses through time, but one thing I did learn, if you're not willing to change, change will not come to you. Business will not come to you. You have to think of your business. If you're only going to provide security to McDonald's, you're going to limit the size of your business and the income of your business. If you're looking to open a security company, why don't you contact us at helpdesk at privateofficer.com. We have people, including myself, who have owned security companies for many years, and we know how to open the company. We know how to structure a security company. And, in fact, we have several opportunities right now for you to begin a security company with very little money. Contact us at helpdesk at privateofficer.com. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Private Officer Beat Radio. Remember, privateofficer.org. Sign up for membership today. And I would like to say, before we close, we need your support. Our news department works day in and day out to bring you the news. Think about supporting us because we are thinking about putting up a paywall and charging for our services if people don't begin uh, supporting us. That's going to do it for today's episode. Be blessed, be safe, and we will see you back on the radio.